Well, it's that time of the year again. Uh, Danny and I are heading up, uh, gonna have a look for some deer. Uh, we're going to a different spot this year, hopefully try and uh, get a red for Danny. I got a nice one last year, so fingers crossed we can run into one. This place got a few fallow on it as well, so we'll see how we go. Um, going to be a bit tougher this year. We normally have a full week on the rut, but we've got uh, two days. And I've had a change of jobs and we've both been pretty busy, so just about to do the late night run. Probably won't get there till early hours of tomorrow morning. And yeah, we'll get up, get into it and uh, hunt every hour of day like there is for the next two days and see how we go. He is a beauty man. I had no idea what we're there. 
like luckily we're in the shadows, the camo work. We literally had a roar, maybe 100 metres around the top of this gully. We came here on purpose because we found a massive cast antler here. It would have been September, October, Danny. Yeah, and yeah at September. That, at that point we decided we're going to give up the fallow um, around home. We're going to come back up here and give it a go, even though there's not a lot of deer. But we've just had a roar up there, waited 10 minutes, nothing, and we are walking down and me and Danny, we literally had just said, we're going to come in here and have a roar off the edge of this. Um, like it was a really nice gully. It's right, at, like Danny had just said, it's right above where the cast antler was last year. Man, we hadn't even got here, and I just saw antler tips come up through the bush, and I'm like, Danny, stop! <laughs> so we're in the open a bit, but I had no idea what we were, and it was circled, and it was interesting. And, man, that last hit looked really good, dude. So, it's I, beautiful, man. To I, 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 I don't know what to say. I'm, <laughs> this is a lifelong... We haven't found him yet, so I don't. I'm trying not to get too excited. Yeah, get but excited, man! <laughs> I want to hope that that thing's down. Um, we're going to give it a good half an hour before we do anything. Yeah. Um, it's early morning. The sun's like it's, it's eight thirty, it? I think. Yeah, it's getting hot. Like today is predicted eight, to be eight forty. Eight forty. So yeah, we have got no rush to go look for him. Plus, we strategically hunted the ridge where the shadow is. So obviously, the sun's behind the camera. Casting lots of shadow, so that deer, when he first came over the rise, his tongue was hanging out. He looked hot and bothered. Oh, and had his nostrils flaring, he was looking around. He was definitely creeping in silently. Oh, we haven't heard a roar all morning, no. but he was definitely coming into what we roared before. And we waited a good, probably almost 10 minutes yeah. after that roar. You know, we, we figured it was action was slow, so we made no point bursting along. Yeah, that was cool. Dude, I just saw his antler tips, like, just like it, in that tea tree bush, and I was just like, Oh crap! Crap! <laughs> when he when he appeared, it was just uh, I didn't know what to do, and he he he, he sensed something was here, but he couldn't work us out. So he kind of moved along, and I thought a chance was blown because he kept going to the right along the fence line. I thought well, the wind was right towards us. That's why I think he started circling around to, to come and get the wind right, maybe because yeah, he knew something was here. But I don't reckon they get hunted here. There's not a lot of deer here. And if he's just over here, we can drive to here, get all the meat. We've got the esky full of ice blocks. That thing's coming home. I hope, I hope, like, heck, he's yeah. down. Well, the shot looked, the shot looked really nice. Look, it was on the shoulder, I think, we didn't get full pano, but it hit him pretty hard, and I saw him jump in the air. I don't think there's a fence there from memory. And he, he jumped in the air on camera, so whether he just had a jump yeah, or... There's a fence there. Oh, there is, okay, well, he yeah. jumped, he jumped that fence. So that had hurt him too, hopefully that arrow's kind of just... But then he didn't, he didn't take off, he came across the ridge quite slowly, so... Yeah, we're going to give him, a, we're going to have something to eat. We're going to sit down to stop ourselves from attempting to look, but... Uh, dude, congratulations, man. Even just the fact we saw one, you know... Well, that's... Two hours into a hunt, we like, it's getting hot. Yeah. You know, the sun's out, we were starting to think, oh... We'll, have, we'll complete this and hopefully we'll see some goats in. <laughs> yeah. um, it's been an hour. It's been the longest hour I reckon in my life. And uh, we're about to get our gear and go and have a look. We just watched the arrow drop out of his shoulder as he was running before he jumped the fence. And uh, we go straight there and pick up that arrow and uh, look for blood trail. And I hope, I hope he's literally within 100 yards. Fingers crossed. That's about what's left of it inside him. And we've got blood up to up to the fingers there. With a bit of luck, we'll find him. Um, yeah, I just want to kind of follow the blood trail a little bit more um, and stay on it. One of us can go ahead and look, and the other one can stay on it or something. But um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty nervous right now. <clears throat> Just in case.
Fuck yeah. He's <laughs> right there. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> He's been lying there dead for an hour. Might as well tell us how you're feeling, man. <laughs> About to cry. <laughs> Just overcome with emotion. My view is between two massive gums and I've got antlers and polished tips <laughs> polished tips and oh oh man <laughs> he's gone from when we lost sight of him he's gone 20 meters amazing dude let's go look at him man he's literally gone 70 meters and dead and that would have been we could have walked up here five minutes <laughs> I'm pleased we waited though Same here, man. Well done, dude. Let's go get him. Let's go look at this thing. Those antlers are huge. You're right, man. Can you go all the way through? Yeah. Look at the tops on this thing. Yeah, it's long, eh? Like, if it, I don't know how old he is, I don't have a whole lot of experience with reds, but man, a lot. It's not that, as big and heavy as that cast. I wouldn't have went through, eight. It's probably going straight through and bounce. Pull and just back. pull back out. There's nothing to worry about. It's beautiful, man. Unbelievable. And look at a cool mane too, hey. Um, 41 years ago um, in Slovenia, my uncle took me out hunting and I had no idea about deer hunting or anything like that. I was nine years old in and uh, we, we harvested a roe deer on that trip and um, since then I've just been obsessed with deer and I've always wanted a red deer. I remember sitting in his hallway looking at these massive antlers and just thinking one day I'd like to have a set for my own and um, you know with John's help today this is what I have and um, I'm so thankful and so grateful. Uh, as it turns out after the shot um, you, you would have seen the shot on video. Uh, once the deer cleared the fence, he literally travelled maybe 40 metres into this paddock, if that, probably closer to 30. Um, and he was laying dead. We waited for an hour before we came to look for him. And uh, he's been pretty much dead for that period of time. Um, of course, my worst fear would be to spook him and then try to find him in the thick country, but it uh, wasn't the case. The shot was spot on, came out the other side perfectly and um, yeah, incredible, I just, I'm still in shock, it's, it's surreal, it's fantastic, I'm obviously going to cape him out, we can drive the car right to this point, we've got a, a heck of a lot of meat, John and I go halves with all the meat that we harvest and um, yeah, we've got, some, we've got some meat for the winter this year, so, and a cracking set of antlers. Incredible, like the you know, it's a, I've always wanted a, a six by six a royal stag, and it just it's crazy, it's crazy. Standing out a good morning this morning, got himself a beautiful red stag. We literally butchered every little bit of meat off it and uh, took the tenderloins, and uh, tenderloins are way too good to take home, so yeah, we've uh, put a little bit of pepper on it, fried it in a hot pan, and uh, about to add the savoury mince recipe base to it that we were going to put with the, uh, the mince, and a bit of rice, 
And what a way to finish the day. It's a good job we bought ourselves a nice bottle of wine too, mate, wasn't it? Yeah. And if you, I think I did say to celebrate you getting a red sag when we bought it. You did. You did. Thanks <laughs> cooking glasses. Well, we didn't bring any of our cooking utensils with us, so we're making do with uh, what's in the, uh, the place we're staying. So, no sharp knives? I forgot a BPA. Oh, well, well, we've been creative, so we've just thrown a half our pack of craisins over the top. A few cranberries. And cranberries go really well with any game meat, so we're hoping it works here now. Venison tenderloin straight from your stag this morning. What kind of rice have we got? We have Uncle Ben's special fried brown rice. Our favourite. Chuck it in the microwave if you got one. If not, chuck it in a stove full of in a pot full of boiling water. Dinner is done. And some canned peas and corn. Like champions. <laughs>